Hey, how's it going, everybody? Dragon's Dogma 2. This game is actually pretty dang fun. Lots of heroic movements, lots of heroic battles, lots of epic deeds. Yeah, suck it, dude! <laughs> but one we surpassed with skill. Of course! The fight would have been lost without you, Arisen. That was good. That was a fun fight. Holy crap, that was fun. Lots of adventuring and lots of spelunking and doing all sorts of other stuff. But also, there's a bunch of different tricks that I have found out in this game that I'm actually going to share with you right now. All right, first one we're going to be talking about is character creation. Now, when you're making your character, there are a few different things that you need to pay attention to, but not really too much. Basically, make the character that you want to make. But also realize that if that character is a little bit taller... Um, they're, if they're bigger, uh, they're going to have faster movement speed. But also, if they're heavier, they're going to also be able to um, carry a little bit more. They're going to be a little bit slower, but also they're um, going to be able to carry a little bit more. But also, uh, if you make them smaller and a little bit thinner, then they'll have better stamina regen. So honestly, if you're going to min-max it, and I wouldn't recommend doing that, because honestly, this character is more about the experience and the roleplay than it is the min-maxing. But then again... Everybody's going to min-max in one step or another, or... Yeah. All right. But yeah, there are certain ways that you can get just the biggest bang for your buck out of certain things. And that's going, you know, kind of tallish, kind of, uh, you know, kind of finish with a little bit of muscle on you. Actually, a lot of muscle on you. And then just go like that. There are a few different ways that you can set it up. But I would encourage you just make the character that you want to make the character that you makes you smile when you look at it, because you're going to be looking at the butt of your character quite a bit. So, yeah, just make sure that uh, you find something that is actually uh, rather, uh, you know, rather pleasant for you. All right, so let's talk about the next thing. All right, the next thing we're going to be talking about is pawns. The pawns play a huge role in this game. All right, so now you can actually see it here. Let me get to a better spot. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. A better spot over onto the side where you can kind of see that. There we go. That's a little bit better. Where it says, go help, wait, and to me. Now, that right there, that is your pawn's orders. You can directly give them uh, certain commands. Like this right here. You can see that I've got Yuki and Marishka over there behind, trapped behind the thing. Very well. I can actually I tell them to straight up come to me, but I don't think they're going to because they're actually stuck behind the cart. But if we go a little bit too, a little bit far away, they'll eventually just teleport to me. See, they're really trying over there to get to me, but they just, yeah. All right, but if we went a little bit further along, then they would eventually just teleport to me and just be done with that stupid car. There they go. All right, but also, uh, that right there, uh, the go command or the to me command, it's really, really important. Say, if you are just out in adventuring and you stumble upon a dragon or a dragon decides it wants to descend from the sky and eat you and you have no choice but to run away. Well, your pawns, they're just going to normally try to fight it. Well, what you want to do is while you're running away, maybe screaming and panic a little bit, what you want to do is shout to me and they're going to drop whatever they're doing and they're going to follow you, which is in a very, very important aspect of the game. That just, yeah, it, it can really, really help out when you're doing that. All right, the next one we're going to be talking about is the wait command. This, this right here, this tells side. them to uh, just wait here or wait next to them and then hold your action and uh, just wait until... To observe our surroundings. And just chill out a little bit. It, this is a really good command to just kind of have them hold in place for a little bit. And then the next one is help. Help set, tells them to drop whatever they're doing, come over, and assist you with something, either by removing a status effect, by aiding you, by healing you, like what that, um, like my what my healer just did, or also, you know, uh, taking a look at a few things around to see if anything around you is helpful. All right, and then next is go. Go is actually a really, really important one because if you'll notice, some of these pawns, they actually have quest knowledge. Now, let me go to my quest. Now, you'll notice that when you're looking in your quest log and then you see the little hand, it'll actually tell you if any of your current pawns have knowledge about that quest. All right? And right now, this one right here, Nation of the Lambent Flame, two of my pawns have knowledge about this quest, which means that if we're around an area and then one of them actually says something about something... Here, let me bring it down to here. Maybe I'll interact off of... 
Guys, there's a thing to gather right here. You're not going to talk about it? All right, well, that's fine. All right, but if you come around and you start, uh, um, if they start talking about one of the uh, different things around them, or, hey, in a previous um, trip beyond the veil is generally what they'll say, uh, one of my uh, a, a different arisen has stumbled upon this item. Well, all you have to do is select go, and they will thing. actually act upon that, like this guy right here. He said, decided, yeah, there's a person right here. I'm just gonna gank them. So he did that. And then also, if you find some sort of a hidden thing, or if uh, when you're running along and they point out an exclamation point, then all you do is select go, and they will go directly to that and settle it that way. I want to talk a little bit about health. Now health, you can see down on my green bar down below where I actually have three different segments. I have a black section, a gray section, and a green section. The green section is the amount of health that um, I actually have. That If that goes down to zero, I die. All right, now the uh, grayed out section is the amount I can be healed. Now if I run up to uh, this uh, pawn right here, what I say help. She'll run up and she'll give me a heal and she'll heal up that gray bit and see it goes up. Now the black bit, that bit right there, that can't be healed. That um, means that as I've been adventuring, I've taken permanent damage and that will constantly be going down. I've actually had that go down to a little bit more than half and you don't want that on some of your certain fights. Now how you get rid of that is by resting in inns or camping out in the wilderness and uh, doing that which actually helps out quite a bit. But also, um, when you're uh, busy uh, resting at an inn, when you're resting at an inn, uh, you can uh, uh, go up to any of these signs that you see out in the, uh, um, in the cities is this uh, flame. And then when you see the flame, that means that there is a place to rest inside this. That's, that's, the, that's pretty universal. For it. Now you go up to the them, retinue makes to fell the talk to them, last. and then you can rent a room. Now uh, the rooms can range between a thousand and I believe twenty five hundred is their cutoff. It all depends on the area. This right here is kind of a, yeah, this is kind of a crap hole place, so it's only a thousand. But also when you're here, it will actually get rid of all of that black on your health bar, and it's actually pretty cool. Also while you're here. You can uh, um, check your storage, which makes the inns a very, very good source for being able to uh, organize your storage. It's really, really helpful for these things. Now, with this, you can actually deposit a bunch of the stuff that's weighing you down. Or you can go through and in your inventory, you can combine anything that's in either your inventory or your storage. And it will just uh, combine into uh, things that generally tend to weigh a little bit less. And I would encourage you, when you're uh, out and adventuring and your weight gets a little bit too heavy, and we'll, I'll go over that here in just a little bit, the pros and cons to uh, heavy and or lower and higher weight, um, then you will, uh, yeah, if you combine a few things, it'll lower your weight. Or you could just have it all uh, come here to storage and you'll be able to interact with it uh, at just about any time. You can combine things right here. Pretty quickly. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Also, in the, how you withdraw from your storage is you come up to any of these um, oh, vendors or the uh, innkeepers, and they'll let, you, uh, in, they'll let you pull anything out of your storage that way. Also, early on in the game, early on in the game, you'll get the chance to actually get your own apartment like I have here. Now, this quest right here is actually really simple to do. Matter of fact, all you have to do is walk by it. It's right here on the map. Right here um, next to here is the uh, main uh, merchant quarter over in Vernworth. You get to this place really early on in the game. And then you run down this way after a couple days. Just do a quest or two in here. And then you'll run down this way. And there'll be a lady standing right here. Right where I'm at, 
And she'll actually say, hey, I'm going on vacation. I need somebody to watch my house. It's going to take a week. Uh, would you mind doing it for me? And you say, yes, okay. Because I mean, letting a stranger into your home and uh, letting them watch your house is actually completely normal in this world, which is pretty cool. So, hey, th since she did that, we're going to take advantage of it and we're going to rest in here. Now, you, if you don't have any available quests or any quests that are actually running down on your timer, you can actually just come in here, rest in the bed for a week, and then once you come out, she'll be right here, and she'll say thank you um, for uh, watching the house for her. But uh, she uh, decided that she fell in love with the place that she went on her vacation, and she'll offer to sell you the house, and it's for 20,000 gold. It's very, very good purchase, and getting gold in this game is actually pretty simple. So 20,000 gold for your own house, where you have access to your own little bed right here and your own little storage. Right here is super, super helpful. And you don't have to pay any more gold for it. I've gotten my uh, 20,000 gold uh, worth out of this really, really uh, quite a few times over, actually. All right, now another way of resting to get rid of your stuff is with health kits or with rest kits or camping kits out in the wilderness. Now, out in the wilderness, um, the benefit of... There's some pros and cons to uh, resting out in the wilderness. Uh, the first pros are when you are out in the wilderness, you actually have uh, certain different types of uh, camps that you can use, and I'll cover those here in a sec. But also you can cook meals while you're out there, which give a permanent bonus for that day, for the whole next day for your companion. So when you're out there, sl uh, you know, take out a goat, take out, you know, a bison, take out something, get some meat so where you can cook it and you can get that buff for the next day um, until you rest again. It actually helps out quite a bit. It, it, it's really good. But also when you're out in the wilderness camping, you do have a chance of getting attacked in the middle of the night. And if you are attacked in the middle of the night, chances are they're going to break your camping kit, which will leave you out in the wilderness without a camping kit. It kind of sucks. And it actually, it really sucks when you're camping kit out in the wilderness, especially when you go out on a really long journey and you uh, camp once. And then the very first time you camp, and you, you know you're going to have to camp probably about five or six, four times. But the very first time you camp, you get set up on in the middle of the night. Your camp gets busted, and now you're screwed, and you have to come back here. But how you replace that is you go up to this guy right here. Any of these little yellow signs with a potion mark, you come up to him. Need anything? Click hail, buy, and then their camping kits are going to be on the lantern one right here. So you, this guy right here, he sells the mundane, the grass pattern, and the explorer's camping kit. Um, I would recommend trying to find yourself an elite camping kit as quick as possible. They're generally the best. Uh, my elite camping kit right here. And this right here only weighs four, and it stands up really well against monster attacks. So you have a higher chance of it not uh, getting broken when uh, you get attacked by monsters, which is really, really good. I don't remember where I got this one, but uh, it is extremely helpful. So if uh, you find one of those on a merchant, buy it. They do come in very, very handy. All right, now the next thing we're going to be talking about is pawns. Uh, pawns play an extremely crucial um, aspect of this game. I mean, granted, your pawns, they are... they're. Yeah, they're, com they're your companions, and you actually kind of grow attached to even the ones that aren't yours. I have my main one, which is Mariska right here, and uh, she has turned out to be quite well. I built her up to be the perfect mage, and then eventually um, changed her over to sorcerer, so where she could put out some serious DPS for me. But then I also... Uh, hired a mage that had the same abilities that Mar that I had on Mariska, which are absolutely phenomenal. And also, I ended up getting Yuki, but Yuki is a Capcom one that has Overspeak, so yeah, I, he, he's a good guy. Uh, yeah, he's a really good guy. Um, but yeah, and so what I would recommend for the composition is however kind of melee DPS, range DPS, however build you want to go with, I would say go with that, go with whatever you want to be on your character. Just know that you have to have a mage in your party because the mages, they will give you a buff that uh, gives you a shield, and I'll cover that here in just a sec, and then also they will give you a... Uh, Oh, a couple different buffs. One that allows you to uh, um, add elemental infusion to your weapons, which is extremely helpful. And another one that will just heal you outright, which is, abs which 
it's it is really really good. And then another one is you want some sort some sort of warrior or something uh, some sort of a tank, something that'll keep aggro and you will be able to work your way around and have your fun with the battlefield because that's kind of what this game is. It's not charge in and kill everything as quick as possible. It's wait for you see that opening and then exploit it. It's really really good on the combat. Now how you get more pawns is you go up to any of these rift stones and here uh the major rift stone here in vernworth is right here on the very center it's the grand rift stone of vernworth now you go up into it and you go inside and once inside uh you'll have a whole bunch of pawns that just come up to you and you'll be able to go through and pick out a whole bunch of different ones now uh let me see uh, there's a sorcerer here. I'm gonna look for a mage right here's a mage called Fern. I'm, for gathering I'm items, digging the name and I'm ever on the hunt for new finds I'll gladly try out any useful mechanisms I espy. All right now what you want to do before you just go up to it You want to uh, well, th there's the cost of it if it's your level or below It'll cost you zero RC, which is one of the currencies in this game uh, RC it, it you don't get a lot of it. Every time you find a Riftstone, you'll get uh, 30 more of it. And sometimes you'll actually find 300 of it on corpses. But that's kind of uh, kind of rare. So spend this stuff kind of sparingly. Um, not too sparingly, but kind of sparingly. And then uh, what, this is what you use to hire the pawns. And when you uh, hire a pawn, don't just look at their price. Don't just look at how they look. Matter of fact, a lot of people are setting up the pawns to be as very cool looking as possible, so you'll hire them. There's some downsides to that. There's also some upsides to that as well. The upsides, uh, they'll come back with a whole bunch of additional RC. The downsides to it, the more people hire it, the greater chance you have of getting your pawn infected. It kind of sucks. All right, uh, so... Uh, when you uh, look at these, look at their details. This will actually tell you a lot more about them. Now you go over to the LB, and this will tell you what abilities they have. Now the abilities they have are the important parts. You don't want to just hire one because of how they look. You don't want to just do anything uh, like that. But this one right here, this is a good one. The Halidom, this is the shield ability that shields uh, um, things from... Oh no, this right here. Uh, the Palladium, this is the one... Uh, that uh, shields things uh, with this little bubble that goes around it. This is extremely defensive ability and very, very helpful. All right, now the Halidon, this one right here, reduces uh, their uh, status effects that you get cast on you. It's the debilitations. This one right here removes it. And then you have the levitation, which allows them, or the leaven, which allows them to cast lightning bolts. This is a really cool ability. And the high um, flagration, which gives uh, allows you to give uh, fire abilities. This cleric right here, Fern, this is a good cleric. All right, this is a good mage. And also she has the anodyne ability that just is standard for all mages. That gives you the heal ability. Plus also she's got quick spell, um, which will really, really help. And she's got ag aptitude of beatitude, which are, are beatitude which is really awesome. This is a good cleric. I would hire this cleric, and she would be very, very helpful. Um, yeah, matter of fact, I may just add her to favorites right now. That's a good cleric. That's the type that you're looking for when you're hiring a mage right there. Uh, it's kind of weird that I found that one on the first one. Good job, everybody. Dang, nice way to set up things. All right, uh, that's the way I actually have Emma right here. Uh, this, She's another one that's just like a uh, fern. And then uh, the way I had uh, Marishka, my mage, uh, set up for uh, that, that's the way I have her. She, that's the best way, and you need one that has all of that stuff just because it makes your party so much more powerful, so much more defensive, so much more offensive, just better. A mage is a, definitely a requirement in every party. They help out so much. Now, also, if you're looking for specific pawns, you can actually go through here and you can search for individualized pawns all the way through here. All the favorited pawns, like that fern one I just found, uh, you can actually favorite her and come back later and hire her as well, which is absolutely awesome. But we cannot level them. All the ones that you get through here, uh, they're, they're leveled up along with the people that own them. So eventually, you may uh, see see this Walter guy right here. Right now, he's 25. If we were to leave him or put him, uh, well, actually, also this Fern. Uh, matter of fact, I'll use Fern as an example. I already lost her in the shuffle. Uh, right now, she's 22. Not that high a level. But if this person right here has a really big play session 
and then you leave here and come back in like a day or two, she may be level 30. You don't know. It all depends on how much that person is leveling them up. So, yeah, like right now, Mariska is like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Mariska, I believe, is 27 right now, which is pretty good. All right, so, yeah, uh, use this for a whole bunch of, uh, you know, finding a whole bunch of really cool pawns. Also, uh, you can even set your pawns quest in this uh, thing right here. Pretty dang cool as well. So where people hire them out, then they will give you uh, um, different abilities. I have mine set up to help out a few archers, giving them some explosive arrows. It, it's kind of cool. All right. And then also, uh, if you were going to look for certain individualized pawns and stuff like that, this is how you would do it. Now, also, if you are uh, stuck on a quest and you know you need a pawn that has uh, knowledge in the quest that you're on, then you can actually come in here, search for a pawn that has, and uh, you can, well, first up, you queue up the quest that you want, and then you come in here, and then you search for pawns that have your quest knowledge. Here, it's like here, uh, advanced pawn search, right here, quest knowledge, right there, and then the, it will actually just get rid of all of the pawns that do not have quest knowledge of your current quest, and then it will replace them with pawns that do have specific knowledge of your quest. Yeah, it's a great way of actually uh, getting a little bit of, just that little bit of helping hand that you can, that you need when you um, absolutely are stuck, which does happen on some quests. All right. Speakable harm on those around me. As it progresses, the pawn gradually loses all self-control and in time will even cease to heed the Arisen's commands. Indeed. Well, we shall have to remain watchful, lest one of our company should start showing signs of this sickness. All right, now that right there, what my pawns were just talking about, that is one of the other things I want to talk about, is the dragon sickness. All right, now that can actually afflict pawns as you're coming through, which is another reason why if you're just trying to get your pawn... Uh, recruited as much as possible you have a very high risk of doing this which is why i have marishka set up like this she's extremely effective but people are only going to know that or notice that if they go up and they inspect her and then they go through all the little bits uh marishka has got a, some really amazing ar uh, weapons and armor and stuff like that don't don't take marishka matter of fact uh after this video i'm turning it off so where nobody can actually get her so don't even try all right but <laughs> uh yeah um Oh, when you're going through and you get a whole bunch of people that uh, recruit them, they have a chance of getting the dragon sickness, which makes them, uh, the moment they start acting weird and the moment they start, uh, say, getting this red glow in their eyes, which means they have the sickness. They're going to start going off and just attacking random things, not listening to what you tell them to do. And once you're going to go to bed at night and you're going to wake up and everything around you will be dead. Every single um, NPC in a section of town will be dead. All the quest NPCs, everything. So the only way to get rid of that is to kill them. Yes, literally kill them. Even if it's your own pawn. Kill them, take them, throw them into something, go into the morgue, recover them, use them with a... Uh, um, or resummon um, them, and then they will be healed. But that is the only way to cure them, is to kill them. So if you see them acting like that, or they start uh, doing weird things, or if they get a red tint in their eye, seriously... Get rid of them because they are infected and it could be really, really bad for you. It can seriously stall your game. It won't destroy your game because NPCs do eventually respawn after, say, like a week or two. At least as far as I know they do. Um, but it could put a real big damper on your save play. So be very, very careful for that. If you they start acting weird and get a red uh, tint in their eyes, get rid of them as quick as possible. It doesn't matter how good they are. doesn't matter if it's your own pawn, especially if it's your own pawn, because you have more control over your own pawn than anything else, and you can resurrect your own pawn a lot more freely. All right. All right, now currencies in this game, what we're going to be talking about. There are two of them. All right, one of them is... Here, let's go talk to this guy. Welcome to Bjorn's Armory. And quality is what you need if you want to survive. All right, there are two currencies. One is gold, and gold is actually so pretty simple. Price, it's uh, really thanks. easy for uh, getting gold. You can get gold off just uh, just about anything That's you kill. Well. Uh, also, you can get That's out of a chest. Also, it's a really big uh, reward. A you get really big increments of it for rewards on quests. Like, I mean, 
yeah, five, ten, fifteen thousand. It's pretty good. It helps out quite a bit. Um, yeah, you get you just accumulate it. So yeah, uh, gold. Uh, it's useful for a lot of stuff. And then also there's the RC. RC you get by people hiring your pawns or by finding the rift stones, or also sometimes you will get it in chests. And you will also get it in off of uh, corpses. But that is rather rare. And yeah, so spend the RC kind of sparsely. But yeah, just know that you will have to spend RC. Also, this vendor right here in the main town, uh, right where the uh, main Riftstone is. This guy right here, he sells RC stuff. Wrong button. Sorry. Sorry, didn't mean to intimidate you, dude. Come back here. Talk to me, please. Interested I was just showing wares. you something. Yeah, so this guy right here, he will sell things like uh, that actually, you know, they uh, improve, you know, certain aspects of, or they change certain aspects of your pawns. Like this right here, say if you're getting, if you made your uh, pawn a straightforward, but, you know, straightforward personality, but you're like, ah, you're kind of grating on my nerves. It's like nails on a chalkboard. Well, you can actually change it with a uh, kind hearted by coming here and here, spending 2000 RC and then doing that. And then you have the art of metamorphosis, which will allow you to change the appearance of your character. And I've already done that on my character once because I accidentally, when I first made him, I made him super short and I didn't want that. So yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, also there's a few other different things in here where you can get glasses and stuff like that. They're they're kind of cool, right? They are. Um, Many but yeah, thanks. you're welcome, dude. Right, but uh, yeah. And now how you use the item of metamorphosis, if you decide you want to change your character, is you go down there, you buy that, then you come up here to any of these shops. They're, notif they're uh, signified by the scissors. On the mini map, you go in there, you talk to them, it'll put you right back into the character creation. It it's actually really intuitive and super simple. It's yeah. All right, one more thing I want to talk about. This is actually a quest that you are um, introduced to early on. Is the ox carts? Use them. These guys right here. Um, yeah, you can fast travel with. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it faced uh, fairy stones. But these things, they're really, really rare. Now, also, um, if you want, you can actually set down a port crystal um, where you can actually uh, set down a place where you can teleport to with the fairy stone. Uh, and then you can also freely pick these things up whenever you want to and then take them to another place and put them down in the other place. So, yeah, you can do that. And it is really helpful to use the fairy stones, but these things are pretty dang rare. You can buy them. They do cost, I believe, 10000 for most vendors. So, yeah, they're not cheap. And most vendors only sell one or two of them at a time. So just be very, use these whenever it's absolutely necessary. I would recommend using the ox carts as much as possible when it comes around to your fast traveling needs. And you will want to fast travel, although I do have to admit that uh, using the uh, ox carts is very cool, but sometimes just the adventure from point A to point B is just the best. But if you've done that, if you've done that adventure so many times, the ox carts are your best friends. Except for when they get raided and the ox cart gets destroyed. That sucks. I've had that happen several times. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> then you, then you're stuck out in the middle of the wilderness, and then you just have to run. It's one of those things. It happens. It sucks when it happens, but it happens. All right, now one of the last things I want to talk about is gear. Now, when you get to a new town, chances are there's going to be some really Welcome good gear Prune's on a lot of these armory. vendors. And quality is what you need if you want to survive. All right, there's going to be some really good gear. At least, uh, generally, if it, you're just getting there, there's going to be upgrades on it. So, yeah, uh, just go through and make sure that you have enough gold for it. These things can be kind of expensive, but generally they're they're... They're priced accordingly, so where, you know, when you first get to the town, it'll take you just a little bit to grind out the gold, and then you come back in here, and you can buy it pretty easily. So, yeah, just be very, very buy. attentive to that. So, so buy price, upgrades on that. But also, you can enhance your gear quite easily as well. So, uh, just know that when you're coming in and you're uh, enhancing your gear, the first enhancement is always free. So, just know that when you... Uh, oh... When uh, you come in, well, it's not always free. It, all it does is cost gold. So it's it, it's pretty dang uh, cheap. But 
as you uh, get to the second and, and third enhancements, they start costing material. Like this one right here, it requires redwood fangs and 1,020 gold. So let's uh, upgrade that. And it, that will reduce the amount of weight it uh, does, give me more defense, give me more magic defense, sometimes raise the slash strike and knock down resistance and the elemental resistance. This time it was none. Uh, now this next one just takes monster fangs and rattler scales. So of course, I mean, I forgot the stuff. I'm going to upgrade it. And that makes it even better. So now I've got a fully upgraded Outlander's garb. And yeah, it should have worked out quite well. Now I just need to go farm the poison pinions for that. All right. Miser's diet um, and then also, oh, just, just remember, on your main pawn, uh, you are in charge of her gear. So make sure you're staying up on her gear. Give her whatever, or give them whatever uh, um, items that you think will help them out the best. Give them whatever armor you think will help them out the best. Don't just go with the stuff that looks the best because it could give you the dragon's illness or the dragon sickness. Go with what is most effective or, yeah. But then again, also, it's your game. You do you. If you want to have your uh, pawn as being the sexy uh, little uh, thing running around, then, hey, that's on you. Have fun with it, all right? But, hey, I do think that's where I'm going to end the video. I hope the tips help you out. And, uh, yeah, hey, enjoy Dragon's Dogma 2. It is an extremely fun game. So, hey, have fun with it. And I hope the tips helped you out. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button. I really appreciate it. If you're new around here, subscribe. And until next time, this is Flinger. And take it easy, everybody.